Fest. Please welcome to the stage, Corporate Director of Entertainment and Events for Six Flags Theme Parks, Scott Sterner. <laughs> Manager of Entertainment and Events for Six Flags Magic Mountain, Pam Bugby. <laughs> Senior Designer of Entertainment and Events for Six Flags Magic Mountain, Mark Wing. Publicist for Six Flags Magic Mountain, Connie Lujan. <laughs> and your host for this year's presentation, Midsummer Screen Creative Director, Rick West. How we doing, Long Beach? That sounds like a lot of you sexy people out there. Are you having fun? <laughs> You have enough stuff to do today so far? Yeah. yeah, all right. Well, we're here to learn about Magic Mountain Fright Fest. How many Magic Mountain fans are in the house? <laughs> well, tell you what, let's get ourselves into the mood, into the mood, and let's turn down the lights and fire up a video, and we'll take a look at Fright Fest, and then we'll get into the meat on the bones. They're doing their own thing and they're doing it really, really well. How many Fright Fest fans are in the house? Have you been? Let's, let's hear you. How many haven't been, but you know you're gonna go after you see this this year? There we go, that's what we're talking about. So I wanna introduce the folks on the panel and we wanna get to know them a little bit so you understand what their correlation is between what they do day to day and how they bring you Fright Fest. So thrills by day, chills at night. Let's, let's talk, Scott. What is, your, what is your role with Six Flags and how does it pertain to what you do at Magic Mountain with Fright Fest? Well, my role is anything scary across the, the North, America, North America. So um, what, what I try to do is the stuff that we've been doing here in Los Angeles at Six Flags Magic Mountain, it's to grow it throughout the uh, country. So as far as where I came into this 30 years ago, we, we were, I was a stage technician there, building on, on a Halloween event before it became Fright Fest. So now we're in our 26th year as Fright Fest, and so now um, where I, I've been a part of this team for over 30 years, and working on things that are just nuts, and, and a lot of fun to be able to produce. And so um, I've actually been very fortunate to be able to make that my career to doing, have, helping people to have a fun time and doing things that are unique. Yeah, like absolutely, right on, that, that's great. Fright Fest has been going, how, how long has, has there been an event at, at Magic Mountain? Well, Fright Fest was 26, this would be our 26th year. This Woo! Year. Yeah. Woo! That's older than some of you in the room, so that's damn good. <laughs> Somebody's doing something right with that, so that's good. And, and if I could add, well, I, it sounds like I've been there a long time. There are people that are some of the, the, the scarecrows. They are the, the boots on the ground, the people that are out there getting those chills at, at yeah. night that have been with us for a few decades. That's and fantastic. It's, it's because it's a fun place to do it. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. You, Magic Mountain 
really, you know, I've, I've worked with you in different capacities before, and, and one thing I can say about Magic Mountain, there is a real sense of family there, you know. This is Team Magic, and I, I, I have the pleasure of dealing with these guys all year long on things, and they're a really great group of people. It's really cool. So you can tell the people that are all involved with Fright Fest, really, really great, and they, they just love it all year long. One person that's not here is Scott Ram. And so Scott Ram, Scott Ram, fans in the, fan, in the, in the audience, yeah. Scott is, is head of screen team, and they do the amazing makeup at Fright Fest. And, and I've said it many times, I will say it many more times, Fright Fest, I think, has the best theme park makeup out of any Halloween event I've ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree, because I think that a competitive market as Los Angeles is, you have to find a way to differentiate yourself from everybody else. And I think Scott and his team has done that for us, yeah. where we, we have some of the best looking makeup that's out there, yeah, and, and it creates a very believable environment. Yeah, so it's, it, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I, that's the pro tip, pro tip, is <laughs> when you go to Fright Fest this year, take the time and really look at the artistry that goes into the monster design whether it's in the mazes or whether it's in the scare zones themselves, that's what you really want to focus on because it's really beautiful, beautiful work that they do. So, Pam, let's hear your story. How long have you been with, with Six Flags and what do you do? I also have been there a while, looking at three decades, I think, Good. just about. And Scott mentioned that we're in our 26th year of consecutive Fright Fest, but I actually remember I think I had to have been too little to be there working, I'm sure. But I remember, I don't know for those of you that might also remember, um, Spillick and Corners before we, I don't even know if we called it Fright Fest then, but Spillick and Corners was kind of the hub of, of the original Halloween haunt area. And if you remember those little, um, we used to have so many water fountains and different little gullies and river type things. And I remember the fog being under there and thinking how cool it was. And we used to dye the main fountains at Main Gate Red and all kinds of neat stuff. So I've been there a long time. And uh, I guess in, in terms of Fright Fest, my position is, is that I'm the producer of the event, although it's tough to say I, because like you said, Rick, we really are a huge family there, and to not include everyone is, is, is so wrong to say. So we produce an amazing event at Six Flags, and um, we're, I'm just, I'm happy to be part of the team, Team Magic, Team Entertainment That's Events. That's great. That's great. And are you a fan of scary things? Do you do you go through these mazes, or do you just say, oh, I go, through I go all have fun? Yeah, <laughs> I, I am a, I, I am absolutely a fan of our mazes and mazes in general. And um, it's funny, you kind of lose your sense of fear a little bit, don't you? And so it's a challenge. When, I, I don't know what that feels like at all. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a challenge when, when someone does scare me, it's just this big, immense event in a maze when, yeah. when someone does get me. So it's kind of fun for the talent to awesome. aim for us. Right, Mark? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Mark Wing. This, I gotta tell you, so we've been installing the past two days. This guy, Mark, has been down there. Have you seen the scare zone in the Hall of Shadows? Mm -hmm. yeah. You like that? Yeah. This guy's been in the trenches with his team, and I'm telling you, he's giddy like a schoolboy. Every time I walk through there, he's sweaty and he's laughing and he's smiling. And he's, but I came up to him yesterday and said, hey, you're having way, way too much fun for being on the clock. You can, no more smiling. You hit your limit. That's it. And so these guys, they talk the talk and they walk the walk. He, he's been in there with his crew setting the foliage, setting the lighting, setting hmm. the, everything, the trussing, everything. So kudos to you because very often you'll see corporations, they just, you know, they send their ground teams out, you know, don't embarrass us and, that, and that's it. These guys, real deal, in the trenches. Mark, you love Fright Fest. Dude, every time I talk to you, Fright Fest comes up. It, it, happy Easter, Mark. Well, let's talk about <laughs> Fright Fest. <laughs> He is risen. Oh, he's a zombie? That's great. <laughs> <laughs> too, what, too soon? So anyway, tell us your story with Magic Mountain. I've been actually just celebrating my 18th year with Magic Mountain. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> um, I started out as a ride operator, um, and I love to just, I wanted to decorate and retheme the rides. And one year I got the opportunity, and it was seen by Mr. Sterner and Neil. And there was a position that really just opened up that I had to go for. And from there, it's now eight years with Fright Fest. Um, my very first attraction I co-designed was the original Aftermath, located in the uh, once action theater of the park. And uh, that was a great maze, by the way. Aftermath, you guys like that? <laughs> that was an amazing, really long, really big scale maze. 
And that was our first big wow, and thanks to Mr. Sterner for allowing us to do that. And um, it's been an amazing eight years, to be honest with you, to be able to develop from the, all the scare zones to assisting with the mazes. It's not just, like, I don't just do the design work. We work with some amazing companies. We also have an amazing team, some of our makeup artists, and Michelle, I don't know where you're at. She does all of our costume design work. Um, she's yeah. here as well. Um, let's call it. Yes, we love yes, you, Michelle, yes, wherever you are. We <laughs> love you, Michelle. Um, and our technical team. So we just um, work as an amazing family, just uh, one unit. And uh, we develop, obviously, from the design phase all the way to its installation and reverse and day yeah. to where we open. So it's and great. I, I wanted to just add that Mark's um, this year helped me out tremendously. We've been building some new Fright Fests out in, around the country. And uh, we launched the first year of Fright Fest at Darien Lake in New York. Hmm. And Mark is working um, with us in order to develop like, some of these, who these characters are. Because you think, oh, we're, we're going to do this type of a maze. Well, what are the characters? Who are the characters that are in there? And Mark's the, the sick mind that comes up with this, this of what do they look like? What do they sound like? What's their backstory? So that you can get that to the actor so that it gives them something to chew on and something to develop that character and make it more believable because I think that is one of the things that makes the difference in, in a Six Flags event. You know, so we've got some of the best thrills during the day, but he creates some of the best thrills at night. And it's awesome it's being able to work with Mr. Ramp and Rod Maxwell we had for many years and Mike Spatola um, for character development. So without those gentlemen, I would call it Fright Fest would not be to what it is right now with all of our character development. So if you guys are out there, thank you very much. And you're super lucky. So Mark's basically living the dream. He's like playing roller coaster tycoon and making a living. <laughs> kind of, except with more gore expansion yeah. packs, I think. So yeah, but it's great. And it's great when, you know, I joke about it, but it's really great talking to Mark because he's very passionate about what he does up, up the mountain. And it's, um, it's great. You can tell when people are there just to punch cards and, and get a paycheck and, you know, ooh, there's our haunted house. But these guys really, really give it a lot of thought and really, I love that. This is good stuff. I appreciate it. Thank we have warm fuzzies right now. This is <laughs> great. Connie, speaking of warm fuzzies, hi, Connie. So tell us your story with Magic Mountain. Well, I have been there 13 years. I'm part of the marketing communication team, so there's a team of six, so I'm here representing all of us. And our fortunate... Um, we're fortunate to work with the creative team here and get to talk about everything they're doing. So, and I'm the holder of the clicker. Woo! So I think I've been Give it up for the clicker. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So um, first, I want to talk. I'm, not, I'm going to talk for a little bit. Give you my little spiel. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. 19 days of Fright Fest, everybody, starting September 15th through select days until the 28th. We are open 365, so you better look at the calendar, look at the website for the days that are selected for Fright Fest. So we are open every day. Make sure you look at our calendar on the website and see what days we are open and offering Fright Fest. But we are very lucky to talk about all this and all the great things that our team's doing. So. Yeah, well, it's great. And are you loving Magic Mountain Be Open all year now, every day? It's about time in Southern California, right? Really good stuff. And so that is, uh, yeah. Now, the thing with Valencia is, you know, it's, it's a little temperate up there, you know, so. <laughs> What does that mean? It means it's hotter than hell. <laughs> it's like the whole park is the hell zone. Welcome to the hell zone, Magic Mountain. Um, so it makes your jobs actually harder. I mean, because it's really, really hot there. So, I mean, you go into mazes that are under construction in, in Orange County or whatever, and some of them are in AC areas. That's very lucky. But also, it's just it's, it's not as hot, because you guys really are up there in the bottom of the grapevine. So, when do you guys start like physically building these things, or do they stay up year round? How does that work for Let you guys? Let me tell you, we've already turned on the AC, so we're not like sweating. There's only one outdoor maze that's aftermath, so for the most part, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. There's a slogan that's cool. <laughs> nice, right on. So, is this? You have a lot of dates. You started in September. Halloween, obviously. Well, we know that Halloween starts today here in Southern California. <laughs> um. But all the events do, they start like mid-September now, really, really, really. And so, um, do you find that weather plays at all into your scheduling? Or is it just, that's it, we gotta do these days, whether it's nice and 78 degrees or it's 100 degrees out, I mean. 
We're, we're trying to scare the yell out of everybody, right? So yeah. I just want to be a little yellish for hellish. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Well, it that works. Matter. Weather aside, we just, we're, we're here. Do you guys expand days? And I mean, now that you're doing the 365 days, are you guys expanding days for Fright Fest? Or is it kind of the same model right now? This, this year, I'll take that one. Yeah. This year it is. We are still open the same schedule that we were last year. But who knows, with the success of being open every day, I'm sure the park will look at yeah. what, what changes we need to do based on being open every day now. Nice. Click something else, because when you do that, we, we can talk about other things. What's next? Let's, let's see what's next. Ooh. That's really scary. There we go. Oh! Sewer of Souls. There we go. What the hell is that? Let's talk about it. What is it? Do you want to know what Sewer of Souls is? All right. Sewer of Souls is one of our new mazes this year, and it will be going where the dead end maze was last year, at the top of the hill. Uh, this is another little story because we were, we knew we wanted to do something different up there and I can't remember how long ago it was, but Mark and Scott and I and some of our other team were up there and we're kind of looking at what kind of theme does this look like from the outside and um, one of, I don't remember who it was, said, well, what about, what, is it a sewer? You know, it's kind of, it's, we can do something good in there with a the sewer. So, <laughs> sewer stuck. And it, it will be a sewer, the sewer of souls. Um, it will be, you, you'll walk in to this very dank, musty smelling location. Uh, previously it was a waterworks company that now has just this tunnel of different sewage and dwellers are now living down there. It's very nasty and gross and disgusting. And I'm excited for you all to be in there and be part of it. <laughs> please let me do your slogans, please, please, please. <laughs> Perpetual 12-year-old. It's he corny. Not there, right? Okay. No, you do it. You, you set it up. Go ahead. Gave her the... No, no it's okay. <laughs> if it's not your favorite... It's... Definitely your number two. Number two. There. <laughs> I was giving you the elevator. I, I had to give that. I, I didn't mean, come, mean, come up with that. I didn't come up with that. I mean, Pam saying number two. Who wants that on a shirt? Yes, please. <laughs> So that will be opening the first weekend, and then click, click, click. We also will be doing a new maze called Condemned Forever Damned. Will be this new location, which will be uh, at the front of the park. And again, we kind of collaborated with a different group of people, and we came we came up with a theme of this house, this abandoned house that just like the Eagles talk about, you can come but you'll never, but you never really leave. What's that lyric? I always mess that one up. Check That's, you can check in any time you wish. Nobody knows the song, it's okay. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I messed it up anyway, We're so. Good. <laughs> but, but the basic premise is that you can come in but your soul never leaves. There's these snow, soul snatchers in there. And so those are, will be our, our, um, our talent inside will be soul snatchers and different people that have lived there. And, uh, you'll come in and, and we've reconfigured the entire maze to be where you walk into a foyer and you see this old decrepit stairway that you have to sneak around and walk under and go through tunnel or uh, small crawl spaces and it's we've added some things in there that we have not had at other mazes so we're really excited about the design of it and um, I can't wait for you all to see it. Sound good? Yes. I'm, just, I'm all enthralled. This is exciting. Are you ready? Let's do it again. Do it again. <laughs> Witches Lair. Well, I'll take this. Obviously, people come for us, not just amazes, but we have amazing scare zones and amazing talent in our scare zone. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what's new for our scare zones this year? And uh, we have a couple people that have joined us in the aisleways and uh, on stage, I guess. Why is she coming out this time? I asked her to come up with oh. friends. Who do we got over there? Well, that's Innocence over there, oh. and we have Tweak on stage as well. We'll get with Tweak. Uh, we'll talk about Tweak in a little bit. Sorry. Witch's Lair is our one of our biggest scare zones we've ever created. It will have the largest cast that we've ever done um, for Fright Fest. Um, it will be located in the Metropolis area. We have designed, well, with our, our team and with an amazing... <laughs> With another amazing, uh, let's call it, um, team, uh, RWS, if you guys are familiar with them. Um, we're developing just this incredible, like, outdoor, swamp-like, woodland area in the middle of the Metropolis zone, um, which will have 
tons of unique, um, what's called creative urban design uh, witches. Uh, a couple of new characters that you'll see as well. We have, uh, we call them our swamp hounds. Um, so we have one in the aisleways right now. Um, and we also have some other new characters that we're going to leave as a surprise for you guys. We want to make sure that we wow you once you enter this area. It's going to be completely unexpected as you turn the corner after you pass uh, our new ride, Crazy Eddie. And we have one of our witches here. Yes, we do. <laughs> I heard a scream, and I guess I guess I wanted to just bring out that when Mark creates a new area or what have you, it's always different than the others. You're never going to see like two zombie areas or what have you inside the park. You're going to be able to go to the witches layer. You're going to the, the twisted fantasy area, so that there's always something unique. Because we think that instead of you coming away from Six Flags Magic Mountain and saying, "Wow, that was great," we want you to say that six times for six scare zones. Exactly. So, because it, it, it's all about making it for a unique experience. Exactly, exactly. And it's, it's taking that, that whole fest side of it. It's a festival of sort of thinking about a horror festival with different experiences. Um, that's pretty. It's distracted by the talent. You're totally scared of things, aren't you? Yeah. Now, the shadows, I'm going to. It's called. <laughs> <laughs> the shadows, I'm going to be there. She's going to be there. I'm going to be there. She's going to be there. I'm 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 I'm not going to go into too much detail. All I will know that a lot of people have said, why is there really nothing in the back of the park? And we have developed a new scare zone that's going to um, take, take you down the dark, shadowy um, hillsides of Roy Rapids Camp and lead you guys over towards the, our aftermath to Chaos Rising. But you'll have some unique characters in here as well. And it's going to be one of our glorious attractions and scare zones we've ever done before. Nice. So it's going to be definitely a different twist and a darker twist. And obviously, just watch out because obviously you never go, know who's going to be lurking within the shadows. We know it's not going to be Connie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll talk about it. Yeah, you can talk about it, but you're not doing it. Guess what's back? I know a lot of people have been definitely asking when are the clowns coming back? The clowns are coming back from the edge of <laughs> So City Under Siege will be making its return with all um, new, some new cast members, some new uh, freaks. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, Tweet, um, Twitch, uh, Tweet. <laughs> Tweet will be present. Um, but yes, uh, guess what experience an all new City Under Siege experience so, um, in our DC Universe area. And uh, we can't wait for you guys to check out something that is one of, considered one of our classics. And it's something that has been with our um, Six Flags family for many, many years. So. Okay, is the clicker done? Goodbye, clicker. What about these characters? Don't you love the characters, you guys? So, so who here in the room is is Team Innocence? Right? Pretty amazing. Love her. Love her, love her, love her. That's fantastic. And, and now, if, let's look real quick. What differentiates Fright Fest from other events during the Halloween season here is um, it's a really great family value. So explain how people can go into the park and have fun during the day, <laughs> and then they get to stay and play after the sun goes down. Here she, she's going to be. I swear to God. <laughs> or maybe number two, and we can have the sewer maze right here. It's a preview. <laughs> I'm down for that. I don't have to clean it up. I'll go ahead. I'll wait right here. Oh my god. <laughs> Preview. <I think laughs> really operations. How do daytime operations feed into nighttime operations during Fright Fest? Oh, that's the best thing about it. Okay. You come for the day, you enjoy all the rides, and you stay for the night. It's all one day. You get the entire day for one prize. And not only that, you get if you have a season pass or a membership, which almost everybody does, right? And if you're not, who you're has a, who has a, who go has a membership one, right? and a pass here? It's the deal. There you it's go. The best thing you get. It's a huge value, and you get all the fright fest. The mazes are, you know, special fee, but everything else is there. But you get the scare zones, you get right? The scare zones. Sure including you including Connie's poop wonderland, oh. or the sewer one, right? That's what we do now. What if 
So you, you said, there, so there is an upcharge. If you want to go to the mazes, there's an right. upcharge. But you get to experience the characters for yes. free. Yes. And you guys, one thing that we don't talk about a lot, or you don't really hear about when you guys are talking about what you do, food. You guys have a really robust food and beverage program that we're seeing more and more play into the different events that you do. Oh, yeah. And I'm here to tell you, I mean, I'm proof, the food is really good at Magic Mountain when they do these events. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, we do. We have um, different types of theme for the areas, but for the food, for sure. We have different areas. We have the pub, and we have actually like picnics if you want to be with a big group. And we also have our full throw sports bar where you can catch a little drink to help you get through the night. <laughs> Definitely. There's a lot of great I think this crowd's into a little drinky drinky, yes? Yes. Yes. I, just a hunch. I mean, to deal with that, yeah. 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 <laughs> I like that. Just a quick story. I was supposed to bring my son today, and he said, <laughs> Eight-year-old, so definitely this is for the um, older crowd, this event, even though yeah. in past, you know, you'd see a lot of kids and we'd even allow, you know, like special lights for kids that are smaller. It honestly, it's, it's scary. So we really do advise for kids of 13 and, well, 12 and younger to, you know, stay home. And we actually run a, 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 an announcement every hour all day long saying that at 6 o'clock, it is not appropriate for, for children 13 and under in there. And so we, we do that. You, you call it a family experience. During the day, it's all sorts of family we're having, except we really strongly suggest people take the kids home. We close the kids' rides, and it is totally teen and adult for the rest of the evening, then starting at, at, in, at dark or at 7 o'clock or so. And we're not afraid to tell them that we really do want to scare the hell out of you. So those boo sticks are a thing of the past. No more of those. It's if you're there, it's because you want you do want to be scared. You know, Pam will have to deal with a lot of the guest complaints that will come up about so, you know when people are having a bad experience or what have you. But during this time of the year, it's they they scare me so badly they wouldn't let up. And I'll go, Pam, yes. <laughs> so it, you know that's when we we are looking for that. We're I'm, I'm saying. Yeah, I would say to her that if, if you aren't getting those complaints, we're not doing our job right. So that's what we're shooting for. Yeah, and I think definitely as audiences, oh, you know I love you. I'm not joking. <laughs> I think as audiences become more sophisticated and the level of the intensity of haunted attractions goes higher, I think that I think that this crowd, I don't want to speak for anybody in the room, but I think that you would love to see Magic Mountain get more and more intense with Fright Fest, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I really, you know, I think that there are absolutely boundaries to explore and themes to check out and really kind of see what your audience responds well to in the years to come. And I think that's one of the things that we do. We do listen to our audience. We do surveys every year to find out what they think about the events. Our audience says that we are scary. We're very scary. However, they think it could be scarier. So that's one of the things that we're doing across the entire North America is that we, this year we took that level of scare in creating the, the deeper environment to because if you have that more eerie, creepy environment with the sound, the lights, the darkness, the people, it, that's what people are looking for in these experiences. And they're, and they're running. And, and in fact, you know, I think this actually proves a point. Pam and I have talked about this many times. People, we, we say people come to our events to get scared, but actually what we do, we come to watch other people get scared. Yeah, how, how many of you park yourselves and watch, watch monsters scaring other guests, right? Oh, yeah. Because you're all sick bastards. We, love that. we do love that. You're, are you crying? Am I like, catnip? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> you show fear. It's water coming out of both ends. That's I, fantastic. I, 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 I'm so excited. I want to say it's amazing to see when innocence makes a grown six foot four man run downhill at full speed. That's, that means we did our job. But I think that monsters also agree there's no there's nothing more satisfying than making people lose their bodily functions, right? Oh yes. Are there monsters in the audience? Oh, and, and do the monsters like when that happens? Then you know you've done your job. Mm -hmm. 
Fantastic. Uh, we even have a 10 code for that at work. A, a 10 100 call. If you get a 10 100, that is someone's getting a major high five and some sort of bonus in his check for that one, right? I think Donnie's on like 10 500 down there already. It's good. And I, I don't know if it's appropriate to say on stage about the competition that we run, but there, we actually have a board, a whiteboard down in the office. And if a maze or scare zone is able to cause one of our guests to go 10-100, it actually gets logged. And so that there's... You said logged. <laughs> it's a sewer maze thing. So, so they're actually very proud of it. And, and we don't do it if they just say, oh, Willoughby's just got a 10-100. The supervisor has to go and confirm it with a slight, no touch, but just a slight, Site visit just to make sure that it really is true. So they take great pride in the uh, the winning of that award for the 10 100. So I think that's awesome. Right there. And if Innocence is going to win the 10 100 today over there for look at this. Just, just, we just watch. That's what we've come to do today. Is just kind of watch this. <laughs> so how far in advance do you guys plan new mazes or new scare zones? We, we are starting before the event ever starts. So for next year, we're, we're evaluating ideas, thinking of areas, looking at budgets, right now for next year. So oh, I, I don't know that feeling at yeah, all. Yeah, you don't know that feeling, <laughs> Mr. Rickwa. And by the way, thank you for having us out here at this hugely successful event. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really is, you know, I, I, I live in this world, I live in the theme park world, and like I said, I grew up in Southern California, so I certainly grew up coming to Magic Mountain, so I have an emotional attachment to it, as well as professional attachment to, to the park. And for me, being the creative director of this event, one of the things that I just absolutely love is our friendship and partnership with, with all the parks and with you guys. You guys have been with us since day one that we started doing events, and that really, uh, that means a lot to us, so thank you guys also for coming out. You guys love hearing about this Fright Fest stuff, huh? Yeah. I want to go to like Magic Mountain right now. We'll ride roller coasters, we'll watch Connie P, and then we'll see the monsters. <laughs> you forever are P girl now. That's, yeah. They're like, you know, it was really great, except who decided Rick was going to moderate this? That was really great. That's going to be the discussion on the way home tonight. So, is there anything else you guys wanted to talk about? The well, you know what, I just, I guess I want to just emphasize, I mean, I think that what is one difference about a Six Flags event, it really is that you have all day long to just come out and ride, ride the best <laughs> rides in the world. Yeah. And then to be able to stay there in the evening to enjoy the best mazes, the best characters, the best scare zones, the best attractions, the best food. So it, it's all about the total experience. So instead of coming in for just the evening, we said, come on out, have a great time all day long and into the evening. Yeah, you spend the whole day and you have a new attraction up there, Fatanity, right? Have you guys been on the new ride? I've never been on Did anybody throw up? Did you throw up and eat it? <laughs> They're going, ooh, but Connie's already peed three times. We got innocence creeping around here. But uh, so this year, absolutely, they got the new ride, which is the biggest, the biggest, what, what is this, the term for it? It is the tallest and fastest pendulum. pendulum. There was like three syllables. God, it was scary. Don't okay. You know that? So biggest pendulum swinging ride. You got to see it. It's beautiful. It's a really big piece of machinery, and it's terrifying and really fun to look at. And you didn't get to do Fright Fest. Right? It's beautiful. It's a whole new experience too at night because this has this spectacular. A beautiful lighting, lighting package on yeah, it. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, that's a, This is the only crowd that gets excited about monsters and lighting packages on the <laughs> It's so right. impressive. Yeah, this is good stuff. Well, you know what? Thank you guys so much for spending some time this afternoon with us. What do you guys think? Awesome. We're all going to go party at Magic Mountain for Fright Fest, right? Are there any questions? Does anybody have any questions? We can open it. If you guys have questions for anybody, if you want to heckle Connie about her bathroom habits, I mean, anything you guys want to talk about. Here's a question down there. Do we have a microphone coming from the back? We, well, you know, it's a small room, so smoke them if you got them. There we go. It's coming. I think I see Kelly. Is there, where, is there a mic? Right over here, right in the front. Or you can yell at it. Yell at it. <laughs> Front of line pass for Fright Fest. Oh yes, yes. 
visit our website and you'll see um, we have a VIP tour and we have um, the flash pass. Yeah. So yes, the answer is yes. Yeah, it's in front of VIP tours. Oh, do you think VIP tour? Oh. oh. Just that was a self-appreciating. The VIP tour, I get it. Gabe, what's up? So I know that you guys said that you, when you plan Fright Fest, you plan it way ahead of time. Is it difficult to implement things you learned from the prior year to the following year since you're planning so far ahead? You know what? We do a, a post-mortem, as we call it, right after the event, in order to, to evaluate what were the strengths, what were the weaknesses? You know, what, were, what was causing the 10-100s out there, and what just put them to sleep? So, you know, you can you start to say, okay, we're going to be renewing this maze over here. And so we think we might have an idea, but if you see something that worked really well, sometimes it's, it's somebody on Mark's team that might come up and have had an idea that we've tried a little something in the scare zone and say, this deserves to be a whole scare zone. And so that, those are the kind of things that we'll do in order to, to do that. So I can't say that it's, it's so far in advance. We, we don't say, this is it. We want to come up with the best idea. So it's, it's a matter of doing it far enough advanced where you can implement it well, but also be ready to make some adjustments to it, you know, in order to come up with the best product possible. We have more questions. Yeah, right back here. Any merch? Exclusive merchandise coming this year. You don't know our retail people up here, yeah. honey. There's always fun stuff that they add on, but I've been like really trying to Get her on a shirt, right? We want the number. We, we want the. We want the number two yeah. shirt for the sewer. Name. We'll pass it on. Yeah, we'll pass it on. But definitely, there's always new merch. Stuff that we can purchase. And they do. They did actually. There's stuff at Fright Fest. The merch, the designs are really cool. Right. Actually, on the shirts. Yep. Do you have another question? Anybody? No, there's hands all over the place. Is Undam um, replacing anything? Condemned. Or Forever Damned? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yes, it's, it's going to be in the location where uh, Toys was, Toys of Terror. And what I, I forgot to mention when I was describing them, but we, we know that the blacklight maze is very popular, so the sewer has a lot of those blacklight elements in it. It's, there's a lot of graffiti and different, um, three, it'll be a 3D glasses maze as well. So we're not losing we're not losing that three D element. We're moving it to the top of the hill. I think it'll be really successful. So we're actually expecting the sewer to look beautiful in there. So who would have ever thought that a sewer would look that good? But it's it's going to look very hot. Another question. There's all sorts of hands. Go ahead, right here. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just me. But does anyone else have uh, blood fall withdrawals? But I have blood fall withdrawals, and you have been around a long time. That's a deep time dive time. right there. Remember man. that. <laughs> So, so do a, like a like a fright fest overlay on an attraction. We, we always think about. So one of the things I think one of our strengths is our rides, and so what we do is we always look for a way that we will be able to use our rides to be, make it different, so that only during fright fest can you do this one ride like this. So that's why we do different rides in the back, in, in the in the dark, or we, we did um, Batman that year where we turned it around backwards on there, and we did that also when we had Colossus. New Colossus won't allow us to do to do that, but we try to find ways to let you do it only this one time of the year. Yeah. Good question, I like that. So, so like for Drop of Doom, you gotta hang on to the bottom of it. <laughs> <laughs> and see how long you, you know. <laughs> okay, so more questions, anybody? Go right here. Because you're sick. You're, you're a sick woman. I like that. You're a sick, sick girl. I, I don't know which, if you're talking about, because we've actually done that a couple of times in Brutal Planet from years back. We had that. It was our first one, I believe, that we put in. The Vortex Tunnel. Mm -hmm. Right. And about. then um, Toys of Terror, which was Jokester's Hideout. Oh, that was the first one. But that has had it until this year. We just took it out to put in this new maze. So. Stand by, we might re, re resurrect that one later. And I think that's, that's also one of the things that we're always challenged with is what are, we, what are we going to do that's going to be new? There's some of these things that work really well. We have to sometimes move one out so we could try and see if this new element's going to uh, be any 
be better than what that one was. And so one of the things that I think you'll see in this new maze, there's, there are scares in there that I've never seen done before in, in Los Angeles, or actually, or across the states. So we're pretty excited about what are some of the things that we're coming up with as to how we're going to surprise you when you walk in, because that's what I think it's all about. It's how am I going to surprise you, because you can look in a room and say, I know the scare's going to come from that closet over there, but that's why we're going to pick this bed over here instead and have, have it pop out of there. So I, I think that sometimes those those things, when, when it is um, popular like that, we'll find another way to put it in another place. Nice. More questions? Going once. Going once. Okay. Um, I remember about 12 years ago, you guys were doing really amazing parts of stuff. Uh, two moments in particular I remember is your tour guide being yanked through an elevator wall with a uh, room where like the clowns just came out of every single panel on the ceiling floor. Uh, do you have any plans to do any more of that kind of stuff in your More stunt type work? Is that what you're referring to? We, we look at that, there's, you know, for those of you that have been involved in that, there's, there's challenges that you have to work through with your, with your stunt performers and making sure that it's um, safe for everyone and fun and repetitive. And, and right now we have it, but I'm sure we actually have talked about doing bungee in different mazes and adding that kind of thing back. You're talking about Carnegie Hall, I think, from the Gearworks Theater, Magic Moments Theater. So yeah, that was a very cool effect in the elevator. And yes, we're, to answer your question, we are always looking at the newest, greatest, sometimes old stunts that can be re, re look re what's redeveloped, the word? redeveloped, rejuvenated, and and um, effective to an effective scare. Do another question over there. You. Yes, you, that's beautiful. You looked around twice. <laughs> <laughs> once to the right, once to the left. Go for it. Any, any, any idea that's just like DOA? I'll be honest with you. I, I, <laughs> what are you talking about number two? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, no. <laughs> but we have obviously looked at it and uh, changed it slightly um, to where it fits our demographic. It fits what the goal is um, for the, the year. Um, we, like to, we look at trends and all that stuff as well. But we obviously really know, um, but uh, there's certain things that, yeah, it might come up, yeah, but we'll evaluate it and then go into effect from there. Great, that's a great question. Yeah. All right, let's do, let's do one more question. Who's going to be the lucky last question answer right there on the aisle? Glory. 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 Guts, blood, all that good stuff. Um, it's something that um, we've we focused, focused on like the actual special effects on makeup and stuff like that um, to where we want things to look cool and effective. Um, obviously, if you go to our scare zone in the hall shadows, it's black light reflect, um, reactive. Um, but this, this one is going to be gory. It's going to take that, um, we'll just say that um, dark backwoods feel to everything. Um, I, we're just going to make it nasty and just dark. <laughs> We're gonna make it nasty. <laughs> I buy that. Would you buy that shirt? Fright Fest. We're gonna make it nasty. <laughs> yeah. We like that. Guys, thank you so much for taking time. Join us today. Go see the new scare zone, the scare zone in Hall of Shadows. You guys like that? Go check those monsters out. Connie won't be there. The rest of the team may go through there. But thank you guys so much. Thank you for having me. Connie, Mark, Pam, Scott, thank you so much. Thank you guys. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your day at Midsummer Scream.